What's up guys, it's Brian from RVA Motorsports. Today, we're gonna be working on a pretty badass bike. Customer dropped it off yesterday, complaining that it won't start because it's been sitting for a while. And I wanted to make the video because I think y'all are really gonna like it. It's, it's, a, it's a cool bike. Let's look at it. Yeah. Look at this thing, huh? Look at that windshield. Y'all ever seen a windshield like that on a scooter? I haven't. Anyway. It's a 200cc Vespa. So it's not the little 50ccs you're used to seeing people scootering around on. The owner actually said he takes this thing on the interstate. And uh, he's got it up to about 70 miles an hour from what he says. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'd want to be doing 70 on that little tire right there. But hey, I guess his balls are a little uh, larger than mine. So first thing I'm gonna do, like I said, to remind you, the uh, first, I don't have zero subscribers at this point. So if you could take a second just to show your support, subscribe, like, comment, anything you liked about the video, anything you didn't like about the video, just be nice. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, anyway, today we're gonna start, since the customer said it's not starting at all, and I've sprayed gas out of a spray bottle I'll show you I spray gas out of a just a regular spray bottle like that straight into the straight into the carburetors well the air intake's throat and it'll start it'll start up if I'm feeding it fuel so that's just a that's just a quick tip to roll out any type of ignition problems or anything of that nature and pretty much sends you right to a fuel issue and it's carbureted and he does put gas in it with ethanol in it because here in Virginia we have up to 15 percent in any regular gasoline that you can purchase um, so yeah we're gonna drain the gas and then we're gonna pull the carburetor pull the bottom off the bowl and pull the jets out, get it all clean, get it back together, see if we can hear that puppy run. That, that, that thing's a hog, guys. Look at this thing. Look. How many girls do you think you can get on that? I bet she pulls them everywhere. Look at this. It's even got a little storage thing on the back. Look, see? This thing's awesome, guys. Tell me you've seen a cooler bike. I mean, seriously. So, we're gonna pull the carburetor. Right here. For those of you of, that don't know, this is the carburetor. And by the way, to access where this air filter is in here, there's a cover on the side that you take off. There's a Phillips screw right there. Phillips head screw right there. Cover pops off. And then you can take a whole bunch of freaking Phillips head screws out of this cover. And then you can spray gas in it like I was talking about. But even with it running for a little while, with me spraying gas and it artificially feeding it gas, it didn't it won't get hot and try to run on its own at all. So the carburetor is probably completely gummed up. But that's why we're gonna pull it, we're gonna clean it off clean it up and see if we can get this bad boy back on the interstate man maybe he can even go 75 on the interstate well that that'd be cool um so i'm gonna pull the carburetor i've never worked on a vespa so y'all are gonna kind of be learning with me but i'll definitely show you i, I will figure out how to get it off i'll show you guys what i had to do to get the carburetor off 
I'll show you how to put the carburetor back on. I'll probably even show you bits and pieces of how to clean it. I'm not really trying to do a lot, whole lot of how-tos right now. Because, uh, you know, my channel's brand new and you know, people are opinionated. So, I'm sure there's a lot of people who think I'm doing it the wrong way. So, we'll just do how-tos later in life. Right now, I'm just going to show you guys what I'm working on kind of try to introduce myself who I am the few thing you know the things I do start bringing you guys along so let's get to the carburetor we'll pull that off and when I get it off I'll bring you back okay so I got it back together now and it does run and what I ended up having to do was I pulled this hose clamp off here and then pulled all the screws out of this air box. I know it's hard to see, guys. I'm sorry. The sun's just coming up. It's creating a bad glare. But you take this off. And that whole that whole boot and case and everything for the air filter will come off and be out your way. Then I took this hose right here loose. And this one down there. Right here with my fingers on. It's a coolant line. And this hose right here. That one right there. The little small one. It's another coolant line. Pull that off. And I was actually able to just take the carburetor and flip it over so the bowl was facing up. Take the bowl off the carburetor. And just imagine this is the bottom of the carburetor. There's three jets in here that you need to clean. There's one here, your main jet and the right dead in the center. And I believe there was one over in the corner that I pulled out and cleaned too. But the main jet has a eight millimeter uh, hex to it. You put a wrench on it and that one, that one was completely stopped up. And the main reason why this bike wouldn't run. And to get the gas out of it, drain the gas I did put fresh gas in it and to remind you this, this thing didn't run at all when it got here but I took this hose clamp loose right there and just pop that regulator down and it just it, it, it pours out pretty fast so make sure you got some gloves on some safety glasses and you, you step back a bit and put you a pan under it it'll help if you keep the cap on it won't rush out as fast but that was the easiest way to get the gas out of the tank that I found if you had like some type of vacuum system that you can put down here that would probably be a little bit safer but that was the route I went with uh, I did smear a little little pudding right there he had a crack that was starting in this neck so for now we just covered it up with that we're gonna order one and replace it we're not gonna it's not gonna stay like that guys because if that starts leaking again or the crack continues on down and starts sucking in right here you'll have a very high idle for one and for two it'll be very lean because it's getting a lot more air into it than what these jets are designed to compensate for one more thing I want to show you guys is you see that this tube right here was extremely brittle and it was connected to a clear hose. It looks like this. This is probably what you'll see going on to the carburetor. Right and somewhere in this region here. Well, when I pulled that carburetor up to flip it up upside down like I was telling you all I did, I mean, you, you can see what happened to the line I mean it's just it's just see it, there's no flexibility to that at all so I just I wanted to show you this in case you run into the same problem I do because more than likely you will there, there's a lot of heat that gets built up right here because it has this plastic tray right here sits down in there like so and the bottom of this 
it's pretty much sitting dead on top of that right there so it just radiate heat radiates heat right back down on top of it <laughs> and it just dries it out and that hose you got to dig with it it runs along the side of this one it was in a uh, sheath I might have thrown it away already but it was in like a, a plastic loom if you will and it runs all the way down through a hole and guys there's usually a cover right here you have to take this cover off I think I showed you earlier in the video there's a screw there and a screw here in case you missed it um, but that line goes to this little box right here I'm guessing it's some type of vacuum box or a charcoal canister or something of that nature and it, it goes uh, let's see there's a T in here Can you guys see up in there? Let me see if I can get you in here. Uh, let's see. I know you can see the hose clamps. There's a nipple on it somewhere. Anyway, you gotta take my word for it. But that hose plugs into right there. This port right here is for this clear one. So I pulled this about the way so I could get access to that T that's up in there and pull it off and replace the whole line. I tried cutting it back an inch at a time to see if I could get to a spot where it wasn't dry rotted anymore. And, and it was just rock hard all the whole way. So that whole line needs to uh, be replaced. Well, yeah, guys, I get, that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. Um, I would go ahead and start it for you and show you that it runs, but I'm sure if you're doing one of these, you know what they sound like when they do run. I don't, uh, I want to finish replacing this tube right here, and then I'll put it all back together. Oh, and another quick tip, it took me a second to find on this, because like I said, I don't, I don't work on scooters, but up on the dash here, there's a cover, and y'all might already know this, some people might not. Underneath this cover right here, that's where you put your coolant in. Your battery is under this cover. And there was just like some diagnostic ports or something behind this one, I believe, if I remember right. But yeah, man. We're going to get this hog back on the road today. We're going to take it for a little ride. I don't know. I think it's going to be fun. Anyway. From RVA Motorsports, this is Brian. Thanks for uh, taking the time to watch the video. Like. Comment what you did like about the video. Tell me what you didn't like. Just don't be mean, you know. Um, yeah, subscribe. I mean, that's... I need all the support I can get at this point in time. And let me let, let me know if y'all want to see a video on this car right here. I ain't long ago purchased it. It's a 2000 Honda Civic Turbo. Let me know if y'all want to see see something about that. All right, guys, have a great day.